H without the Y? Why this moment? Why this tournament? It's because in this sport, the dream is to stand on the lanes for a televised final. All 10 there, full rack attack. And there's your strike. It's because every bowler wants to walk in the company of the game's legends. Win what they want, succeed where they succeeded. For the win, he's got it. Coming home, three. This is the fifth and final major of the season. Impossible pressure under a giant spotlight. A chance to tear up the stage with an emphatic statement. Buttrup moves on. Even no. McCune takes down another legend. One defining performance. For the win. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. The PBA Players Championship starts now on Fox. Presented by Snickers. Our best of five final features fresh face and flame throwing Kevin McCune versus Jacob Buttrup, who with the win would become Hall of Fame eligible. An electric crowd we have here, standing room only. Happy Mother's Day to all of our bowling moms out there. So happy you're spending some of your special day with us. Rob Stone, yeah, they know who you are. The Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson, here with you. Back at the 1968 Fort Worth Open, the 1968 Fort Worth Open, Don McCune won the first of his Hall of Fame career titles on the tour. Nearly 44 years after that, his son, Eugene, won his final title on the tour. Yeah. And today, we could see a third generation McCune, Kevin, win on the PBA Tour. It seems like every time you and I are together, there's PBA history yeah. in the making, right? Kevin McCune is an absolute dragon slayer. And what he has done to get to this point today has been amazing. He took down the number one player on the planet in EJ Tackett. They did go to a roll up, and McCune was able to survive taking down EJ Tackett in a ninth and 10th frame roll up. Next up for young Kevin McCune, well, it was Anthony Simonson, and he swept him 2-0. This guy is unfazed by everything. No pressure at all. I mean, and the numbers that he's brought to strike track in this event, we haven't seen before on the PBA Tour. He throws darts. We're talking 30 miles per hour. Yeah. Those balls are moving down lane. He takes on the talented but unpredictable Jacob <laughs> Buttrip. Jacob had an 89-pin swing yesterday between his first and second games. Can't trust him. He's sneaky. Right? I mean, he didn't have a double against Bill O'Neill in game one. He shoots 175, and just when it looked like it might be a cakewalk for O'Neill, what does he do? He starts game two with the front seven. They go to a roll off. He gets a nice break trip in the six pin, and he eliminates Bill O'Neill from this tournament. One thing you can say about Jacob Buttrip, don't ever turn your back don't on him. Don't turn your back on Butters. Here are your odds to win, provided by Fox Bet. And Jacob Buttrip has been installed as your favorite to win the fifth and final major of the season, the PBA Players Championship. Let's check in with our two finalists standing by with our Kimberly Pressler. Thanks, guys. So, Kevin, in the open, they called you the Dragon Slayer because you took out two of the hottest players to get here in the finals today. But along this journey of yours, you have been nothing but calm, cool, and collected at any point. Did you feel the pressure that you're going for your first major? Uh, not really. I mean, I'm out here because I know I'm able to compete with these guys. And, I mean, it's in my blood, my dad, my grandpa. So I feel like I was born to be out here and haven't really felt the pressure yet. Well, we have actually mentioned your dad and your grandpa several times over the past few weeks, but today it's Mother's Day and your mom, Christine, is here cheering you on. So what would it mean for you to win in front of her and the family on Mother's Day, your first title? Obviously, it'd be something very special. Um, it's definitely nice to have them both here, but at the end of the day, it's just another day and I need to come out and perform. I mean, whether they're here or not, I can't think about it like any sentimental day. 
It's just another day of work for you. Good luck today. And Jacob, there, you know, it's been no secret whatsoever that you were super close to your mom before she passed just under three years ago. What does it mean to you that today of all days you find yourself in a major on such a special day? Well, Kimberly, it's, it's a win no matter what. Um, being in this situation, I'm very thankful. And I know that Kevin's got his mom here today supporting him. And I know my mom's supporting me upstairs. So I think no matter what the outcome is today, it's a very special day. And I'm very thankful for it. I have no doubt that she is super proud of you, but there's more on the line than just a major for you today because if you win today, you are actually Hall of Fame eligible at 28 years old. Have you given that any thought? Uh, definitely. I, I've been roaming around um, just thinking back about it, but at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's Mother's Day and you know, Hall of Fame eligible on the line, so I think I just need to put those aside and out, go out there and bowl the best I can. Wish you luck today. Thank you. <laughs> Kimberly, thank you. As we take a look at today's oil patterns, plural, on the left, it's the Dick Weber 45. On the right, the Don Carter 39. Yeah, we see a lot of urethane balls going down the Don Carter pattern because it's a much shorter pattern, easier for the players to control motion on the shorter pattern. They're also going to play farther to the outside part of the lane than they would on the Dick Weber pattern. Kevin McCune will start us off. Again, this is the best of five. So... It's not a sprint. It is a marathon today. You heard how loud the crowd was in our open. Quiet now and turn them back up, McHugh. Turn them back up. Oh, I mean, is this guy ever going to get nervous? Is he ever going to feel nope. how big this moment is? Nope. I mean, he just starts off like that. Takes a seat. That thing show only 20.9 miles per hour? He's, he's just getting warmed up. Come on, man. Bring the heat. Bring the heat, Nuke. Your two seed, Jacob Buttra from Tempe. 710. Hey, I got a guy in the house who knows how to drop this. Oh. Uh. You know who's here, don't you? I do. The guy who's going to give Jacob Buttra a ride back home later today. The one. And the only ginger assassin. And gi the ginger assassin actually. There he is. There he is right there. He actually made the 7 10 split against Butra. At a major. Yeah. There he is. There's, there's our guy, Anthony Nyer. The ginger assassin. Come on, give us a wave, Anthony. Well, the guy behind him realized he was on yeah, TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is cool. Knows. Anthony, by the way. The smile that popped on our faces yeah, yeah. when he came over here to our little booth area. Yep. So good to see him. Not the start Buttruff wanted. Again, best of five. And oh boy. Well, we talked about the unpredictable nature of this game. And you're seeing a valley right now, but there's plenty of peaks to come for Buttruff. Strikes on the left lane came with a reactive ball, and he's starting with urethane. Match number one yesterday versus Bill O'Neill. Butcher for rolled a 175. Followed that up with a 264. It was perfect through the first seven frames as well. There's the arsenal for Kevin McCune. Pur purple hammer on the right lane for Kevin. That's bringing Ooh. some serious smoke right there. Fastest strike numbers I've ever seen on, on strike track. Goes for the 2-4, hammers it. Take a look at the tail of the tape between the McCune and Buttruff, both of them in their 20s. Yeah, and some big numbers really stuck out to me, Rob, and that was the averages first and foremost. And then take a look at the high game for both players. McCune up 11 in the third. Uh, it's thinking about it. 10 pin again. 
Well, the 10 pin didn't go down, but I promise you it probably has a mild concussion right now. It doesn't know what yeah, to do. It, it needs a support staff to <laughs> make its way to the, the back. Wait till this one hits it. So he's using the purple hammer on the right lane, which is non-reactive. The ball on the left lane is an innovator solid, which is reactive. And again, long pattern on the left, short pattern on the right. Makes sense to go with the stronger ball on the longer pattern. Jacob Butcher right now, purple hammer on both lanes. And we'll wait and see if he does go to reactive on the left. First strike for Butcher. Two oil patterns in, in Kimberly. Jacob is uh, just fine rolling that way today. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. He said that uh, when I talked to him earlier, he actually genuinely enjoys competing on the dual patterns. He had two 300s this week. He also had a low of 145. So, you know, I asked him, you know, how do you like competing on them? And he says he he loves it. He says it tests everyone's versatility and you have to have faith, have to have patience. He says, you know, you could be really good on one lane, but if you don't figure out the second one, you'll start to overthink things. And I'm really good at mentally switching from one pattern to the next. Well, he's having some issues early on here in our best of five. So that's his second open frame through four. And open in the first and the fourth already for Buttress. The lead at 24 for young Kevin McCune, trying to win his first PBA Tour title. His dad and his grandfather, both winners on the PBA Tour. Former Midwest Region Rookie of the Year. 24 years old from Munster, Indiana, about 30 minutes outside of Chicago. Bam! Second strike for McCune. He looks for his first double. pin coming across looking for the four but you know I kind of feel like I've seen this movie before Rob what was the title uh, it, it was titled Kevin McCune uh, gets off to a really great start and wins and Jacob Buttruff bowls a bad opening game seems like a long title ouch it's be shorter condensed a little bit more of a hook it's tough to get all that on a poster. Let me work on it during the break. Came against Bill O'Neill yesterday. Butcher shoots 175 out of the gate. If Had two open frames in that one as well. Yeah, no doubles. Uh, three strikes if you don't count the fill shot. If he spares here, here, he'll be on a 175 pace here in game one. Again, this one, not a sprint. This is a marathon. Best out of five. So you can have a down game like Butters did yesterday. Yeah. And have the time to respond and recharge and get your game back together. I'm still thinking about how to condense that movie title. You got about an hour and 45 minutes to work on it. I'll even let you work on it through the USFL game, which follows us. But I think you'll come up with something. Buttruff in the sixth, good gracious. Two four six ten is full. Two four six ten. He went to reactive that time. He got out of the earth in on the left lane, and it, again, disaster. Oh. 
open frame number three. My goodness, nobody saw this coming here at the PBA Players Championship. Kevin McHugh looking for his first tour title, and game number one is going his way so far. On Fox is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Want to move fast? With Same Day Mortgage, you can go from application to approval in as fast as one day to get you closing on the home of your dreams in just 10 days. Learn more at rate.com. And by Bolero, the number one place to bowl, party, and play with over 325 locations nationwide. Head to bolero.com today to find a center near you. Well, the bowling business has been good to the McCunes. There's Don, won eight tour titles, the 73 PBA Player of the Year in the Hall of Fame. And then Eugene, three titles on the tour. Great success as a senior player as well. And there's Kevin McCune, just 24 years old, two regional titles, seeking his first title, though, on the national circuit. This is just his second year as a full-time pro. And there's his dad, Eugene. Watching son Kevin, a lot of folks saying, I haven't seen Eugene smile that much in ever. Yeah, it was good to see, man. I, Eugene was so proud of his son yesterday. Really, 10? Really? So a lot of times there, there could be too much velocity creating a ringing 10 pin. Watch six pin, second from the right. And I mean, it just slingshots around the 10. We saw uh, McCune yesterday with the golf hole jersey, the 19th yeah. hole right mm -hmm. at Tiger's Place. You, you see what he's got on his jersey today? Uh, I can't tell. Take a look at the brown there. Okay, there's Knight Automotive on the back that looks for like a all of your automotive needs in the Crown Point, Indiana area. I go to Knight Automotive. <laughs> it looks like a baseball stadium. It is a baseball stadium. It is one of the greatest baseball stadiums on this planet. It's Wrigley Field. Kevin, a huge baseball fan and player. Loves all baseball. Cubs would be his team if he had one. Kimberly's got more on the baseball career of Kevin McCune coming up in a moment, but McCune takes a seat now with a strike, his third of this match, and he is in control against Buttruff here in our best of five opener. And Buttruff still seeking that second strike of this opening game. And it's a good thing it's uh, the, be uh, the best of five for Jacob Buttruff because it's a rough start, his execution's not very good, and his ball reaction's terrible. If this was stepladder, Good seeing you, Jacob. Yeah. Well, let's take a look, Rob, at what he's done thus far on just the left lane alone. Remember, he started with urethane, and there's the urethane ball going down the lane, so he goes light. Okay, well, all right, well, let me make a little move off of that. Let me try to go a little bit straighter. Oh, tonk, big four. And then he comes back with reactive. Well, I got to get out of that ball. Let me try this one, and, and it's uh, the same result, six split. Yeah, back-to-back -back open frames on that left lane. And that's where Jacob is right now. Needs something positive on that side and gets it. Went back to the urethane ball on the left lane. Baseball night in America next Saturday. Baseball always on McEwen's mind as he gets that left to drop. And Kimberly, his baseball success has led to a lot of his success here on the hardwood. Yeah, it sure has because you know, you know you mentioned that he loves baseball, and that's because he played it all through his youth in high school and in college, and even won back-to-back -back state titles in high school. So as a freshman, he was a catcher. And as a sophomore, he was a pitcher, and he told us that he uses those experiences to find similarities between baseball and bowling. And for instance, baseball is all about using your legs. So it's natural for him 
to use his legs to generate all the power you see when he throws. He says, typically, most people think power comes from your upper body instead of pushing with your legs. Uh, could you imagine playing Little League against uh, Kevin McCune when he's uh, back there behind the plate and you're trying to come home? Nope. Nope. I'm going to like take, take a pass. Be like running into a brick wall. <laughs> Slams that one to the pit. McHugh was a two-time collegiate All-American at Palmet College of St. Joseph. He bowled and played baseball there. Led CCSJ to wonderful rankings in his two years there. First double for Jacob. He, he, didn't, he didn't pay off your, your Calumet story. I'm waiting for you to pay it off. Well, I left that one for you. That's more your turn. I well, thought. but I I, th you, I thought you could, like, kind of team me up on that. Randy, do yeah. you know about a certain talent that bowled at Calumet College of St. Joseph? With with Kevin McCune. With Kevin McCune. Yeah, his name is Petey Burgos. I started coaching Petey when he was 12, and he had a fabulous career at Calumet with Kevin. There you go, Jacob. Well, this game is... Pretty much lost for him. Yeah, but, but, but Butters is figuring things out here. Strikes in the eight, nine, and ten now. He's he's kind of wading through the shark-infested waters right now, trying to find his way for game two. And we talked about the unpredictable nature of his game. Don't turn your back on Butters. Sneaky. Unpredictable. Figuring things out. We'll see how it plays in game two. Back to reactive. Oh! Rob's favorite pin. Yeah, the 10 pin. You know what? The 10 pin's mother doesn't even like the 10 pin. Jacob pulls that one in, so he's done with a 178. one is in the book so McCune takes game one of our race to three this one was a blowout what does Butters have in store in game number two find out when our live coverage of the players returns to Fox Don McCune Wearing the yellow so well. Won eight career PBA titles. 73 PBA Player of the Year. He produced Eugene McCune, who won three times on the PBA title, including winning the Cheetah with Dad Don in attendance. Eugene taking down the legend Norm Duke. And Eugene live with Kimberly. Thanks, Rob. So Eugene, it has been said, and I've been told, that getting a smile out of you is far and few between while you were a pro, but yesterday, you were nothing but smiles. Well, when I was bowling, every time I smiled, I split. So I <laughs> swore I'd never smile again when I was bowling. Well, that is definitely not a good thing. But uh, how proud are you of Kevin going out for his first major? I'm just proud of him as the person he is. Um, he's just a great kid overall, and bowling is secondary. You know, he's just doing a great job. So I got to ask, does he get his steel nerves from you? He's just got his steel nerves from coming in with the bases loaded and having to get out of it every time pitching. <laughs> Good luck to you guys And today. happy Mother's Day to everybody. Happy Mother's Day. That including Kevin's mom, Christine, who's in attendance. So Kevin took care of Jacob, 206-178, 28 pin win in our opening game again this the best of five, so a chance for your two seed Jacob Buttruff to rebound right now. And again, he finished that first game on a bit of a roll. 
and may have found a comfort zone. But he's on that left lane, which he had two open frames on in our opening game. He's the six. Left lane, last game for Butcher because light through the nose, through the nose. Strike in the eight, strike in the 10. And now he starts off with a six pin here in game two. And, you know, Rob, we talked about it in the open. We talked about it in game one. You just don't know what to expect, right? I don't know if he's, if he's comfortable yet. Well, the numbers have worked in Kevin McCune's favor here at the PBA Players Championship in these TV finals. Look at the numbers thrown by his opposition. Very beatable numbers. Yeah, I mean, he's doing just enough to get by, right? And, and not n no big games from Kevin McCune. In fact, his highest game thus far in the two tw mid-220s, 225. 227 also yesterday versus Simonson. Yeah, both 220s came yesterday, but his opponents are doing nothing against him. Wow, that one got there fast. Woo. What's the hurry? Matching nine spares to open up our second game. This is the final major of this PBA season, the PBA Players Championship presented by Snickers. More bowling next weekend, though. Super slam down in Jupiter, Florida. We got a reading on a spare shot, 27 miles an hour. And we've seen faster from him. Oh, that's pretty. Jacob earned a bye as the two seed, beat Kevin Williams in the round of eight, and Bill O'Neill yesterday in the semifinals. As you take a look at Butter's bio, he has one major championship on his resume, winning the 2019 USBC Masters in Vegas. Looking for his second major title today, which would make him Hall of Fame eligible at the age of 28. Just when he tries to mount an offensive, bringing seven for Jacob Buttruff. You know, you're kind of waiting for this, right, to, to kind of start developing like we saw yesterday. And, and that kind of puts the brakes on it right there, at least early on. Good news is he's hit the pocket now for his first three shots. Bad news on the left lane, he goes four pin and then ringing seven. Nine spare strike to start for Kevin McCune. We had the interview just moments ago, Kimberly talking to his father, Eugene. His grandfather, Don, would bake his balls. Are you kidding me? Well, he would. Before there was any, did they taste good? Before there was any uh, regulations on equipment. Um, what kind of psycho fakes his balls, by the way? There was some altering done to the surface of the bowling balls to make them softer so they, so they curve more or hook more. And because the balls back then didn't hook. Uh, and whatever you could do. He literally put his bowling balls in the oven and baked them to reduce the hardness and soak them in Oh, he soaked stuff. them too. Yeah. What stuff? I don't know what the chemical was. I'm not even sure that chemical. What kind of lab is he working in over there? I'm not even sure that chemical is legal these days. Oh my gosh. He soaks his balls and bakes his balls. Any All legal back then. Yeah. Any then. Anything you could do to, to 
soften the surface of the right. bowling ball. And and Don got the the nickname <laughs> Soaker. You know, Don Don was famous for the soakers. And then they put restrictions on balls, and you couldn't do that anymore. You got Don. Oh. More issues for Butcher. I mean, can, honestly, can you imagine the visual of opening up an oven and there's a bowling ball sitting there baking at 350? Listen, I, guys used to put lead weights in the finger holes and then put plug on top of it just to create an imbalance. Over here, cut that six pin into the seven. Another open frame. So, so guys would take lead weights, right? They drill the fingers and thumb holes deeper, as deep as they could. Then they put lead weights inside the holes, and then they would put plug material on top of the lead weights so you couldn't see it. My goodness. Uh, and with that, we welcome you to the beer frame, sponsored by Paps Blue Ribbon of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ask for the original, and please drink responsibly. Maybe put some PBR in those finger holes and do some chugs for a little win. Seven pin left. Maybe Butter should be baking his balls right now. Do something. I, I just, I just got word on the chemical that was oh used. The text machine is insane today. Who told you this? Uh, Justin Wyman just sent this to me. I don't even know if I can pronounce this. Uh, methyl ethyl what? ketone. Methyl ethyl ketone? Yeah. Yeah. I'm fairly sure that sounds illegal in, it's, in it's, numerous states it's, and countries. It's, it's, yeah, it's way illegal in just about every country. Where would one acquire methyl ethyl whatever the heck that is? I don't know. Maybe from a veterinarian. I have no idea. Wait. <laughs> veterinarian? What, what is, what is, wait, give me that chemical again. Where is it? Hit your phone. I don't know your passcode. <laughs> methyl ethyl what? I just like saying methyl ethyl, I'll be honest with you. Uh, there. Methyl ethyl M-E-K. 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 Yeah. The kids call it M-E-K. Here, look, <laughs> now we have a picture of it. We do? Oh my God, you can't buy it. It's like uh, in one of those paint thinner cans. You can uh, still get it at your your favorite <laughs> hardware store. Yeah, can't apparently. Wait. Let's go load up on some MEK. What are you doing this weekend? I'm gonna go shop for some MEK and then bake some bowling balls. You know, I don't know. Maybe I got time, I'll go to Home Depot. I don't know, I don't know yet, but I'm definitely gonna soak bowling balls in MEK and then bake them. <laughs> my goodness, I love this sport. What the hell happened to this show? All right, let's get back on track, Randy. Is that all right with you? Man, did we go off the rails. We sure did. 310 for McCune. Yeah, nice pickup. And that is your Spare of the Game, sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Want to get moving fast? With Same Day Mortgage, you can go from application to approval in as little as one business day. Time to get your dream home crazy fast. Learn more at rate.com, your Spare of the Game. Just shot there by Kevin McCune, and his lead is at 21 pins over Jacob Buttrip, and McCune took game number one by 28 pins, and he's got himself another early lead here in game two at the PBA Players' Championship. Welcome back to our live coverage of the PBA Players Championship next weekend on FS1 and here on Fox. It's the PBA Super Slam Cup. You'll see the major winners, including EJ Tackett, Jason Belmonte in action in Florida. Anthony Simonson will be there yep. as well. So will McCune and Putra. A lot of good uh, signs out there today. Ditch mom on Mother's Day to watch Butters. All right. That's terrible. Yeah, it's bad. That's good, though. Yeah. Remember my, remember my awesome reign as 24-7 champ? Eight seconds. <laughs> Lasted eight seconds. Yeah, we'll see Butters in uh, Kevin McCune again next week. Yep, next Saturday, 2 Eastern on FS1, and then the final Sunday here on Fox, also at 2 Eastern. Jacob Putra on the right, needing something and gets a strike. That's his second strike here of game number two. Both have come on the right lane. Misses wide left and still gets it back. That's a good sign. The bad thing for me, though, is in a game and a half, he has not tried to change locations yet.
Again, the shorter pattern. A little bit more friction. Makes sense that ball would get back a little bit more. Needed that! You got it. Sure did, Rob, and he went back to the reactive ball this time on that left lane. Juggling act for Jacob Buttruth here in game two, as it was in the first game. Just trying to find something consistent. And again, this is best of five. So should he lose here, he's still alive. Barely. Barely, but still alive. McCune, 12th at the U.S. Open this year, and gets all 10 to go there. Ooh. Good numbers to look at right here on strike track. There's your location and break point. It's pretty solid there. You know, you, you talk about, well, he goes down till he still has a chance, right? What what are the odds, like, say, NBA four, uh, seven game series, teams down 0 3? Slim. Like, Super slim. I don't know if that's happened. I don't think it's ever happened. But, I mean, yeah, odds are not good, right? But at least you got odds. Oh, yeah, McCune starting to get dialed in here. So that's his second double here of game number two. Lead at 21 as he takes a seat. Good news for the Buttruff camp. They're looking for a triple here. Kevin McCune keeping the pressure on Jacob Buttruff. You can see the max scores there, 248, McCune, 237, Butters. Finally moved a little bit on this right lane. He's moved a board and a half. And right over the third arrow. The last thing Jacob Buttrick wants, I promise you, is to fall 0-2 against anyone, let alone Kevin McCune. Kid is not phased. No by the bright lights and big crowds here on the PBA Tour. And a big miss down lane and a miss inside at the arrows. Good cleanup by Buttruff. Week five of this 2023 USFL season continues next here on Fox. The Memphis Showboats taking on the New Orleans Breakers. You can see it here on Fox. Also available on the Fox Sports app. And that is coming your way next when we are done with live bowling from Jersey. It's the final major of the season. The PBA Players Championship. Best of five. Game one went to that man, Kevin McCune. And he is... In control here, game number two, the lead at 13, looking for three in a row, and finding it. Well, we talked about the theme, right? Execution and strategy, and right now, thus far through almost two games, Kevin McCune is making better shots than Jacob Buttruth, period. That's a ham bone. And Randy, you look at his score through game one and game two. He hasn't really been in danger. He hasn't had to make any clutch shots. All his relatively few spare attempts have been pretty basic. Just staying out of trouble, doing what he has to do, and his opponents haven't pressed him once. Man, it's over. Game two is over. Come on, seven, get down! All right, we've got ourselves a pack, six pack alert. Kevin McCune can strike here. He's going to win $1,000, sponsored by Paps Blue Ribbon of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Please remember to drink responsibly. Sunday, Mother's Day, 
you're at the bowling center, you're watching a major, and now somebody's saying, I might, I might hand you a six pack. Or I might take that six pack away and just put it back in the fridge and keep it iced on the Yeti and we'll save it for a little bit later. But the bottom line is McCune is now up 2-0. And Buttruff is now in a must-win situation as we get ready for game number three in moments. Buttruff coming over to the side, talking to his ball rep. Parker Bone, the legend. I'm sorry, McCune over there, and there's, you saw the legend, Parker Bone third. Late drop of the seven for Buttruff. Hard to tell if there's any ball change for Jacob Buttrick because it still looks like a purple hammer. I don't know if it was a different purple hammer or not, trying to get some intel on that. But Jacob Buttrick's got to find something to have any chance to stay alive. And then he's got to maintain it for three games. Yeah, a lot of confidence in the McCune camp right now, understandably so, a 206 followed by a 247. So that is it, 247, 204, a 43 pin win. Kevin McCune, one game away from winning his first tour title and a would be a major as well. When we return, pressing questions, Tom Doherty makes an appearance. What? Yep. The most famous bowling soundbite in history took place inside this facility February 26th, 2012. Pete Weber back at the 69th edition of the U.S. Open. Other father-son duos to win PBA titles with the Webbers and the Johnsons. The Troops, the McCunes, and we might be able to add another McCune, right? It might be Dad Eugene and yeah. son Kevin McCune with the way things have been going so far. Rob Stone, the Hall of Famer Randy Peterson back here with you. Sold out crowd here inside Bolero, North of Brunswick. And so far, they have seen a show put on by Kevin McCune. Hasn't even been close. Yeah, he's been on. Uh, he, nobody's pushed him mm -hmm. uh, it, since the start of the televised finals in this event. And Kevin McCune's stayed out of trouble he's done exactly what, what he likes to do and that's go with power and speed and keep the ball in play last game 247 i mean it wasn't even close first game was a blowout but here's young kevin McCune, game one where he shoots 206 it was plenty against that's just 178 and then game two he strings five in a row late to shoot 247. Um, i don't see his ball reaction going away anytime soon he's locked in he's going to go with what got him here, and that's speed and more speed. So a 28-pin win in game number one, and here are the highlights from game number two. He took a 247-204, so a comfortable 43-pin win. And again, this is the best of five, but this marathon is now turning into a sprint for McCune and the fact that he only needs to win one more. Butcher has to rally and snap off three straight wins. You take a look at our score today, and it is Kevin McCune up two love game number three still to come but before that as McCune talks to his representatives it is time for today's pressing questions presented by go bowling our kimberly pressler she's going to investigate the most embarrassing moments experienced on the tour by our pros through the years and i'm pretty sure i can guess at least what one of them is Stu, what is your most embarrassing moment on the lanes i slipped on lane one and I slipped like cartoon style and my feet went above my head and I landed on my 
on my ass and and there was like the people in the bowling center were like really concerned and Dom and my friend both were like ah! I'm bowling with uh, Houston and uh, it's my first it's the national doubles in Reno and I walk up there and just foul the first shot and Houston's like gotta do better than that <laughs> gotta stay behind the line at least and I was God. at least uh, yeah that was like my very first shot as a national tour player at the big F on the screen. I would say tripping over the ball return is definitely up there in the top five of embarrassing. I mean, I did rip my jersey one time in match play and then still had to bowl. And that was pretty embarrassing, just... On purpose? Yeah, I was pretty mad, and... Uh... Like Hulk Hogan style? Because that's what came to mind. Is that what you did? Yeah, not all the way through, though. You know, don't have the muscles quite like the Hulk. I bowled on 126, I think, on TV. I did my best uh, Joel, Joel Embiid impression and two-handed dunked my ball into my bag, and it just exploded everywhere. And everybody's up there looking at me, and I felt like I was about this big. At a European tour stop one time, I fouled when I needed two on my field ball to lose the tournament. That was pretty embarrassing, actually. Tom, I can't really think of anything off the top of my head, but could you tell me what your most embarrassing moment on the lanes was? I don't, it, it seems like anytime Rob Stone's in the building, I don't perform very well. So I remember our first decade in, encounter wasn't very wasn't very good. Yeah! Yeah! Give a hundred! <laughs> I don't remember the exact score, but it was it wasn't very good. You don't remember it or selective memory? Yeah, it's I'm getting old, so it's trying to forget it. Uh, I remember the number. You guys remember the number back there? What was it? Yeah. A big 100 for our friend Tom Doherty. Yeah. It was a magical moment, by yeah, the way. It was. Uh, it's so much fun with that. Your, your most embarrassing moment on the tour. Bowling a tournament, Cleveland, Ohio. I feel a tear in my pants in the crotchal region. I kept bowling. Every shot, it got worse and worse. I had a tear that went all the way down to my knee. Called the tournament director in. He came over and said, Randy, are you wearing drawers? I said, yes, sir. He said, keep striking. That was it. <laughs> striking. Uh, thankfully, we caught you on a day where you were wearing drawers. Excellent news, Randy. All right, game number three from the PBA players. Set to come. Buttruff on the left, McCune on the right. Must win situation for Butters. And it's next live on Fox. This year's major tournaments have delivered again. The triple crown. And again. Belmo raising the hardware. And again. Masters champion. And again. Touch it. He's if you want to be a major champion, you've got to be a closer. It's time to award bowling's last treasured title of the season. Expect some fireworks, because it's now or never at the PBA Players' Championship. Welcome back to Bolero, North Brunswick. Kevin McCune with a 2-0 lead in this best of five final showdown against your two seed, Jacob Buttruff. All McCune so far. A 206 and a 247. And this young 24-year-old is one game away from his first tour title. Oh, Through the nose. Last player to win a major for their first title. Chris Vi. Yes, sir. 2020. Happy Mother's Day to Chris Vi's mom, Mama Vi. Mama Vi, she makes the absolute best chocolate chip cookies. That's right. I remember that. We missed them. <laughs> Great bowling friend, Michael Barrett's mom, Julie, sitting down in front of the TV watching us live as well. All the great bowling moms out there, wish them a happy Mother's Day. Jacob Buttruff yet to start with a strike here, had an open frame in the first, a nine spare in the second, trying to get another Nine spare, and, and Kimberly uh, Buttruff 
with some advice from a Hall of Famer in between that last TV break. Yep, absolutely. During the break, Jacob calmly walked over to Hall of Famer Parker to get some advice on what to do. And so I asked Parker, you know, what did you suggest? And he said he told Jacob to get deeper on the lanes and get more angle through the front. And then he said with a big smile, but that's easy for me to say because I'm on the sidelines and Jacob is out there doing all the hard work. Parker Bowen III right there on your left talking with senior Masters champ Dino Castillo. Dino tour rep for Brunswick, which is the staff that Jacob and Kevin McCune are on. Not a good sign to start either for no. Jacob here in game three. You know, getting back to the NBA down 0-3. No team has ever come back from 0-3 in the NBA. Only once has it ever happened in the NHL. Oh. Who? <laughs> oh, no, I knew you were going to ask that. Oh, no. Open frame again. He's had at least one open frame in every game today. He had three in the first, one in the second, and another one here in the third. Bet you I'm going to get a text, though, letting me know which NHL team it was. Now, McCune, biggest spotlight of his young career. Game three, looking to capture his first ever event. And a major. Great way to start after the open frame by Petra. It'd be the first major for the McCune family. We've yep. had so much of the broadcast talking about the three generations of McCunes on the tour. The grandfather, Donna, former player of the year in 73. His father, Eugene, who's in attendance here today. There he is. Yep. Won three times on the PVA tour. And now son, Kevin, trying to win one as well. It's been 11 years since a McCune won on the PVA tour. Oh boy, we may be just about 11 minutes away from it happening again. 50 years ago, grandpa, player of the year on this tour. 1973. Won his first tour title in 68, the Fort Worth Open, July 14th, 1968. That's when the McCunes first put their stamp on the PBA Tour. I mean, that kid looks like he could make a grizzly bear run the other way, mm -hmm. right? That is a big test right now for Jacob Butcher. Down two games. Can't find any level of consistent success today. According to Strike Track, the moves are minimal. Just another board right, same zone, and it's not working. Hasn't worked in two games. Oh, come on. Huge mistake. Back to back open frames. An extra chum in the water now for Kevin McKinnon. For sure. Crowd trying to pick up Putra. He needs something, but McCune's got that look. shot another ball change for Jacob Buttrip on that left lane has that ball found a home on the left lane stay tuned Three in a row for McCune. Mother, may I? Yes, you may. All right, there's Jesse Irich, general manager here at Bolero North Brunswick on the right of your screen. Debbie Stein, ops manager here. Thank you guys for hosting us for so long. Great turnout, sold out yesterday, sold out here again today. Great to be back in this venue too. First time in nine years PBA has been here in McCune. Yeah, mom knows what's what's in the works right now. The lead has elevated to 55. Yeah, it looks like he's created his own trough on that left lane as well. Some greats have won inside this building. Jason Belmonte, Pete Weber, 
Norm Duke, Tommy Jones, Chris Barnes, Walter Ray Williams Jr., Dick Weber. It's not going Butter's way. We talked about the unpredictable nature of his game, and that's kind of well known across the tour. But with that unpredictable nature, it's it's valleys and it's peaks. Yeah. We haven't, we haven't seen a peak yet. Uh, the execution's just not there, and the part of the lane that he's playing is not working. Missing spares. It's just an avalanche of trouble for Jacob Buttruff. All of his misses are high. Momentum gets one on the left lane. Much needed strike in the sixth for Buttruff. Two strikes, two open frames. And that has created a huge opening for the flamethrower. Nuke, Kevin McCune, who's just a few frames away from his first tour title. The on-lane graphics you see, including the oil patterns, which are projected on today's lanes, courtesy of our good friends at Clutch Bowling. Yeah, good stuff there. We've always been a fan of Clutch Bowling. Speaking of Clutch Bowling, this guy getting up on the right lane has been pretty clutch. Kevin McHugh now just a few frames away from taking that hardware we showed you just moments ago. The lead is at 55. That's five strikes in a row, so we've got ourselves another pack, six pack alert. If Kevin strikes here, he's going to take home $1,000 sponsored by Paps Blue Ribbon of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Please remember to drink responsibly. He strikes here, it's all but over. First time we've seen a really big miss by Kevin McCune all day. But it's a manageable miss. Oh, absolutely. It's just the six. Yeah, I mean, that could have been five. Instead, it's just a six pin. Yep, he knows the score. He knows what he has to do. He knows he's just three frames away from capturing a major championship. And there's his dad, mom, commissioner. There's the PBA, Tom Clark there on the left, watching this one. Eugene's already counting the money. He's got a chance to make more money next weekend at the Super Slam down in Florida, live on FS1 and Fox. And Jake, Jacob will have a chance for redemption next week. He's not going to remember this day. No, no, nor should he want to ever. Scrub this one. He, he might take a shot of M.E.K. when this one is done. You're going to move on. You're back on that? I bet you have some in your garage. Uh, no idea what to do with it, but I'm sure I have it. It's all rusted out. <laughs> Rough day for Buttruff, but, you know, honestly, we, we never really saw him try to do anything different, right? I mean, it was just like hook it, hook it, hook it. The shape was always kind of the same in the same part of the lane. There you go. He did change to a different ball in that left lane, and I know you'll love the name of this ball he went to. I'll be the judge of that. Troublemaker. It's all right. Exactly, all right. exactly what Kevin McCune has been yeah. today, right? Yeah. Nine spare works, 22.2 miles per hour. Yeah, he's thinking about his victory speech right now, right? Yeah, he's thinking about how big a wheelbarrow he's going to need for all that cash. 
Hammers that one into the pit. Biggest check of his career, biggest win, obviously, and biggest win for the family. For sure. First major one by the McCune family. And more history. They've been at it since the 60s. Doesn't matter. Max score for Buttrev, 225. Is that right? 205. I'm sorry, 205. Ooh, almost a great pickup from McCune. So he'll take an open frame there in the ninth, then take a seat. And you're going to hear some big time applause coming up when he steps up in the tenth. McCune only needs four in the tenth frame. I think he can manage that. There's the max scores. Your number two seed right there. Disappointing day for Jacob. Yeah, just messy. I mean, Mc, remember, McCune went through Zach Tackett in the round of 12 and then dropped the one seed EJ Tackett in the round of eight. And then Anthony Simonson, who'll be your runner up in the player of the year contest yesterday in the semis. Yep. And I know the opposition maybe didn't bowl their best against him, but he took on some top flight competition. shots and then the coronation one more shot for Jacob been a frustrating afternoon for that talent. The win today and Buttruff would have been Hall of Fame eligible. Thank you guys. Thank you. 178, 204, 175. For Jacob Buttruff this afternoon. But here's your story. Kevin McCune. Sponsored by Snickers, nothing satisfies like a Snickers. <laughs> 29.3 on the last shot. He was trying to get to 30. Great job by Kevin McCune. Congrats. Wow. Nuke wins his first tour title in front of mom and dad. Christine, Eugene, your son Kevin has won on the PBA Tour. What a run. What an amazing run. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. Yeah, Trophy celebration live when our coverage of the PBA Players Championship continues here on Fox. What a moment for the McCune family. Kevin winning his first PBA Tour title in front of mom and dad, Eugene, a former pro on the tour, as was his grandfather, Don. So now three generations of McCune's winning on the PBA Tour. Pretty good Mother's Day gift for Christine right there. She hugs her son, Kevin McCune, who has won for the first time on the PBA Tour. And it came at a major the first time a competitor on the PBA Tour has won a major as their first title since Chris Vi did it back in 2020. And it was in emphatic fashion. Wins by 28, 43, and 45 pins today for Kevin McCune. Yeah, it was a slaughter. Uh, Kevin McEwen was never tested any time in any match 
uh, on any telecast throughout this event. And, you know, uh, when your opponents don't average 200 at you, that's a that's a really good thing for your camp. You can take a look at the scores today. Jacob Butcher, I mean, 178, 204, 175 is not going to get it done anytime, anywhere on the PBA Tour. This was Kevin McCune's first time on television. You know, we saw him yesterday, we before. What impressed you about this young talent? He, you know, he was so poised, right? And he, and he just stuck with the game plan. His strategy was really, really good. And he, and he stayed with his A game, and that was the heaters, right? He, yep. he brought it. He made really good quality shots all day today and throughout. And he took down some of the Goliaths uh, of the tour. And he just seemed unfazed by uh, all of the... Uh, all of the big moments. He, he, he was just never phased by anything. Yeah, nothing bothered him. We no. saw it during warm-ups. Right. We saw it yesterday. We saw it today as well. Convincing win as Kevin McCune becomes a first-time winner on the PBA Tour. You know what he's been waiting for? Tell me. The trophy presentation. Yeah. All right, let's take it down. Lane John Weber, Tournament Director, PBA Commissioner Tom Clark, and Kimberly Pressler. Kimberly? Thanks, guys. John Weber, would you please do the honor? Kevin, congratulations to you. I'm happy for you and your family. Went for three generations of the McCunes. Congratulations. Thank you. Very nice. And a few words from the PBA from the commissioner, Tom Clark. Hi, Kimberly. First of all, happy Mother's Day to you and all the Thank mothers you. out there, and thanks for watching. Um, first, uh, you know, Jacob Buttruff has had an incredible career. We feel for him today, but I know that uh, he's going to end up with enough credentials to get in the Hall of Fame one day. Uh, but what we saw here today was an awesome display of power. Uh, and this young man ran through a murderer's row of incredible players, E.J. Tackett, Anthony Simonson, Jacob Buttruff. Um, and I was sitting with uh, his mom and dad that whole show. And I'll tell you, your mom especially, it's Mother's Day, you, she was nervous. She was nervous. And, <laughs> but you know what? She's real happy right now. Congratulations. A star is born on the PBA Tour. First major championship. Congratulations, Kevin. Thank you. Kevin, a star is born is the perfect statement for today. Now I'm going to ask you one question because you're going to go up and sit with Rob and Randy in a few minutes. So I've got to ask you, how does it sound? You are a major champion. It sounds real good because now I have one up on my dad. <laughs> well, congratulations. I just want to thank all my sponsors, too. I mean, I couldn't do it without Hammer and all the brands of Brunswick, Bolify. I mean, look at this awesome jersey, Turbo, Genesis, Knight Automotive. I couldn't do any of it without them and all their support, and it's just an unreal feeling. We'll see you in a few more minutes when you go up and talk with Rob and Randy, but right now, why don't you go celebrate with all your fans here. Congratulations on your win. <laughs> Welcome to the big leagues, kid. Kevin McCune winning his first title on the tour that just happens to be a major. What a special Mother's Day for the McCune family. And Kevin will join us live on set to talk more about it as well. He handled that like a grizzled veteran, thanking all the sponsors, checking all the boxes. He knows what he's doing. He's, he's learned from some pretty good people in front of him. Mature beyond his years and the kid can throw it with gas. Kevin McCune, the first to win their first tour title at a major in three years. And Kevin McCune, your PBA Players Champion, will join us live on the set next year as our coverage returns on Fox. We welcome you back to Fox Sports Live coverage of the PBA Players Championship. There's your winner, Kevin McCune, with another winner there. Look at the smile on that young fan's face. What a great outing from Kevin McCune. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, back here with you. Certainly not Jacob Buttruff's day. He had an opportunity to become a Hall of Fame eligible by winning his second major today. It didn't happen. It just was not his day. And really from the opening frame, which was an open frame back in game one, he ended up having seven open frames over the course of three games. Jacob standing by live with our Kimberly Pressler. Thanks, Rob. Unfortunately, it was a very frustrating day for you, Jacob, but you just seem to not be able to get comfortable out there right from the very start. What happened? 
Uh, the lanes were definitely different today. I feel like no matter what, they were definitely hooking a lot earlier than they had been when we bowled on the TV pair this week. So I just couldn't get comfortable with that. Missed a couple of spares the last game, and unfortunately, that's how she wrote it. As the games progressed, do you feel like it was more about the lanes, or was it more physical, or was it more mental? It started with physical, and then at that point, it just ended up being mental. So I think that I just have to kind of take a step back and um, realize that I did bowl good to get here, and you know, one match never determines a career. Well, this doesn't have to be the, the bad thing that it is, because you had so many people here that were celebrating you today, and then you have someone like Parker Bone in the wings there for you when you need it. What does that mean to you? Uh, I can't even put in words to express how I, it really is. Uh, having the support here, I think, is absolutely amazing, and I'm so thankful for every bit of it. And Without them, I wouldn't be where I am today. You know, at the top of the show, you said that today is going to be a win no matter what. I mean, you walk away with $50,000 in your pocket, and your season, yeah. that's right, and your season is still not over. I mean, you have the Super Slam next week and $100,000 on the line for that. So what does it mean to you to be part of that? Well, I just can't bowl Kevin in the title match, <laughs> but um, he, uh, no. Already making jokes. I love it. <laughs> yeah, he, um, he bowled phenomenal. Um, I'm super happy to see him win in front of his parents and I think that I'm just going to use this as motivation for next week. Well no matter what I know that your mom is looking down super proud of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and we will see Jacob next weekend on FS1 and Fox with our coverage of the PBA Super Slam Cup presented by Bolero. You see the winners of the majors will be taking part and Buttruff will be there as well. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, back here with you. Jacob Buttruff, so kind and graceful to accommodate us with that live interview after an extremely frustrating Sunday on the lanes. And as Bill O'Neill told us the other day, it's really hard to win out here. Yeah, it really is. Um, uh, you know, it, it was frustrating to watch uh, from my vantage point because it felt like Jacob never changed zones. Mm -hmm. There was like the only adjustment was like maybe a ball change on the left lane. Um, but that zone never changed. And, you know, he's better than that. He, this guy knows uh, how to bowl, obviously. I mean, he's like two wins away from getting into the Hall of Fame, one major away from yeah. being Hall of Fame eligible. But to stay in the same zone for three games and average a little over 186 is never going to get it done. And I, I'm, I'm surprised that he never got away from that spot. You know, it was like third arrow, third arrow, third arrow. And that really never changed in three games. And his score dictates that that was yep. not going to work. Yeah, scores of 178, 204, and then a 175. Seven open frames over the course of three games. So Kevin McCune taking advantage of it and winning his first PBA Tour title. We're going to hear from Kevin live in just a moment. I want to remind you on Saturday here on Fox, got some baseball action coming your way. Mookie Betts. I like him. Yeah, yeah, and I, know. I like the Dodgers. You know that. I know. You like Mookie Betts. He's a darn good bowler as well. He and the yeah. Dodgers take on the Cardinals. Or Julio Rodriguez leads the Mariners against Ronald Acuna Jr. and the Braves. That is Saturday, 7 Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on Fox. Also available on the Fox Sports app. USFL action coming up next here on Fox. But when our coverage returns here to the PBA Players Championship, we're going to hear from the man on the left. Kevin McCune joins us live on the set. We started the day with two generations of McCunes having one on the PBA Tour. It's always fun when we can update a graphic live. It is now three generations of PBA champs, courtesy of the McCune family. Don, Eugene, and Kevin today winning his first tour title, and it comes at the final major of the season, the PBA Players Championship. And Nuke was electric <laughs> today. They nuked the competition, nuked Jacob Buttruff. Wins of 28, 43, and 45 pins, and he joins us right now. Congratulations, Thank champ, you. by appreciate the way. appreciate it. Yeah, w at what point did you feel this one was going to go your way? Um, kind of halfway through game two. I, I saw him start to really struggle with which ball he wanted to go into. I knew he probably wasn't confident in certain balls, but, I mean, Jacob's Jacob, just like EJ and Simo, he can strike at will once he figures it out. But it, he was really lost on pretty much both lanes, and all I had to do was maintain composure and make sure I hit the pocket. I mean, if I hit the pocket, I liked my chances of striking. 
Kevin, congratulations. And, and I, I agree with you, but remember yesterday. So Butcher shoots like 175 to start against O'Neal. It's the same kind of picture, right? The same yeah. movie we saw in game one against you. And then what does he do? He comes out game two and starts with the front seven. Were you kind of expecting that to happen in game two? 100%. Okay, and then all of a sudden, that didn't happen. I mean, through game or through five frames of game two, he's in the 180s. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was definitely not surprising to me. Or, I mean, it was surprising. Because, I mean, knowing Jacob, it, once he gets the right role, yeah. he, he strikes all day. He's one of the highest striking players out here. It's amazing what he can do with the bowling ball. Yeah, when he, and a lot of players say the same thing, Rob. Uh, nobody outstrikes Jacob Buttriff when he gets on the strike train. Yeah. Mom and dad here in attendance, what do they say to you after you finally won it all? Uh, they, they're really proud. I mean, my dad's a little bit mad. How? I won up them. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good kid you are. Huh? He I raised a good them. one, right? <laughs> <laughs> one up them by finally winning a major, major. for the McCune family. Yes. As well, and uh, you got to check your phone to see if Grandpa yeah. has chimed in as well. What, what does it mean, though, to you, to your dad, to your grandfather, having three generations of McCunes having won on this, the PBA Tour? I mean, that was the whole reason I came out here. I, I knew I was good. I knew I was going to be able to compete. I didn't know how long it would take me to get adjusted. I mean, obviously, I still have adjusting to do. I won a major, but I found something at the right time. I mean, when you find something in a tournament, you run with it. And that's what I did, but there's still a lot of learning out here. And I mean, now everybody knows that I'm here to compete and hopefully keep on competing every week. Just your second year full time on the PBA tours. We're going to take a look back at our championship recap. Randy and you are going to talk talk us through game number one and you know an, an opening mistake by Butcher for an open frame in the first. And, and you started with the strike in the first, and you never trailed through the course of the afternoon. Yeah, you got off to a great start with that nasty slap on the nine pin. And then after that, Kevin, take us through your process. Um, uh, the nine pin was a good shot. I moved in a little bit off of that the next time I went over there. But the right lane was a little bit tight to start. So I just went to tucking the pinky early. And then it helps me get my ball roll a little bit earlier. Sure. So that way to get the ball started up. And obviously, as you can see how the game went on, I was able to throw a couple strikes on that right lane and lock it up here in the 10th. And, and just being able to know what does what was it really able to help me understand, especially after yesterday. And then with your foot pressed firmly on the gas pedal, you start game three. Spare five bagger. What were you thinking after that fifth strike in a row? Yeah, I just had to stay, stay the course and hit the pocket. Whatever I had to do, just hit the pocket. And if I got nine, I got nine. How fast do you think you threw that one down there to get those final few well, pins? I was trying to give the crowd 30. Yeah, yeah, you got real close. I mean, it looked like you were throwing an eight pounder down the lane. <laughs> Uh, it's just a beautiful moment. Yep. You know, not many people get something like that, winning your first tour title in front of your parents and on Mother's Day as you take a look at the scores today. And Kevin McCune sweeping Jacob Buttruff here at the PBA Players Championship. You're not done. you got a couple days off. And you pack your bags and head down to Florida for the Super Slam. Did, did you think at any point Super Slam was going to be in your future here in 2023? I mean, I never counted it out, but also being realistic, I'm like, I have a lot of learning still to do. I mean, so to be able to go and compete is something that I'm truly honored to be able to do, especially considering I'm going to be the youngest one there. I mean, Simo's only a little bit older than me, but <laughs> he has a couple of years out here on me. For sure. Kevin, Rob, he, he, he said, you know, your second year full time. Uh, the biggest stage of your young career happens here at the Players. You take on E.J. Tackett, the, the hottest player on the planet right now, the second hottest player on the planet, Simonson, and and then Buttrip uh, for the title, your first win ever. It's a major. You had to be nervous at some point, no? Um, I'm not really the nervous type. Baseball has prepared me well. I mean, I played baseball on TV in front of people. I, I came in with bases loaded to pitch my sophomore year of high school, and it was a one nothing game. <laughs> I gave up one run with no outs, with bases loaded. We went on to win two to one. I mean, I closed that game out to help us win, and baseball has helped me prepare me. And I mean, that was on TV, so I had TV time, and this was just another TV time for me. It's been nonstop hugs and conversations since you went. Has it set in yet? You're yeah. a major champion, man. 
It, it hasn't, but I'm sure it will when we make this 11 and a half hour drive home. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have plenty of time to discuss things in that 11 and a half hours in the car. Kevin McCune, congratulations. Thanks for joining us live. He is a major champion. Kevin McCune will be back to wrap things up on our live coverage of the PBA Players Championship on Fox Returns. The PBA on Fox is sponsored by Go Bowling. For friends and family fun, log on to GoBowling.com to find a center near you. By Guaranteed Rate. Want to move fast? With Same Day Mortgage, you can go from application to approval in as fast as one day to get you closing on the home of your dreams in just 10 days. Learn more at Rate.com. And by Bolero, the number one place to bowl, party, and play with over 325 locations nationwide. Head to Bolero.com today to find a center near you. Kevin McCune pocketing $100,000 today by winning his first title on the PBA Tour. Kevin's got a chance for another title next week when our coverage of the Guaranteed Rate PBA Tour continues. It's the PBA Super Slam Cup presented by Bolero Saturday on FS1 at 2. Sunday, the final on Fox at 2 Eastern. EJ Tackett will be there, your presumptive player of the year this season. EJ Tackett, U.S. Open champ and world championship winner. Pretty loaded crew. It's, it's not just Tackett. This guy named Jason Belmonte, your TOC champ, yep. is going to be there as well. Simonson, Masters champ. Uh, Butcher gets there because he finished fourth at the World Championship. It just so happened that EJ finished first, followed by Belmonte. Here's his TOC win. And then Simonson. Remember, Belmonte won the TOC in two days. It was two days that he had to bowl just to climb that ladder to win the Tournament of Champions. Should be a fun show. It's going to be a loaded yeah. field. We know that already. And that man will be there as well, Kevin McCune. Yeah, not Eugene. Not Eugene. It is Kevin McCune who just won the PBA Players Championship. Coming up next here on Fox, USFL live action. The Memphis Showboats taking on the New Orleans Breakers. For Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler, and our entire crew here in New Jersey, I'm Rob Stone. You have been watching the PBA on Fox, and you just witnessed history. Three generations of McCunes have now won on the PBA Tour as Kevin McCune wins for the first time as he takes the final major of the season, the PBA Players Championship.